Do you want to find clients as a freelancer on the internet? In this video, I will show you how you can find clients on the freelancing platform Malt. Hi, my name is Melcher from Contest Tax Consulting. And in fact, that introduction was a lie because you can't find clients on Malt. They find you. And that right there is the biggest difference that you need to know. Because on other platforms such as Upwork or freelancer.com, jobs are directly posted to the website and then freelancers can apply directly for those jobs. This often leads to a rush to the bottom and many clients will often choose the cheaper option, which is always bad for the freelancer. Malt works somewhat differently because on Malt, the focus isn't on the job posting, but on your profile. And you really have to do a kind of search engine optimization. Meaning, if a customer were to be looking for some kind of agile coach, then you should try to rank as high as possible because that increases your chances of being contacted by the buyer and being asked to make an offer for this particular job. How exactly this works is what we'll be looking at today. And that's why I will be taking you onto my screen. When you log into your profile on Malt, the first thing you see is your dashboard. Here you can see a whole heap of information such as that I am Marie Jensen. Of course, that's not me, but I do work a lot with Marie Jensen and Marie is a part of our team behind this channel and the whole content production of Contest Tax Consulting. We used to find customers on Upwork and Malt, and here you can see some more gamifications, such as how many people saved you as a favorite, you can see how much revenue you made, and so on. What you should know about Malt is that Malt is sort of like a search engine or an open phone book for companies to find freelancers. On Upwork, the projects are the main focus, so everything is geared towards the job postings and you as a freelancer get to apply for these projects. To show you exactly what this looks like from a customer's perspective, let's search for a freelancer. Let's say we are looking for a community manager. And of course, we are looking for said community manager remote in Germany. So I click search and then you see what other clients will also see. So how many times your profile has been viewed and what's incredibly important, what name you gave yourself. And the first results here do this quite well, which is why they are at the top of the list. They have the title for which they want to be found in the title description. Samuel here, for example, writes community manager and Anna here, for example, calls herself creative content and social media marketing. That's what she wants to be found for primarily, but has added community manager as her first tag. Why is this important to be found at the top? It's just like with Google or any other kind of search engine optimization. When you are at the last page or even the third page then you get less clicks and therefore less offers on your profile, we will have a look at details in Marie's profile. For this, we click on change profile settings and then we can check out her public profile. The first thing we see is her photo, which obviously is very important. It should be a friendly picture and please be visible on your photo as your client obviously wants to know who he is in business with. Then of course, your name and your description. Marie writes about herself that she's an expert for target group communication. And then we find the location and so on. What is super important, and those are the details you should be paying attention to, is your non-obligatory rate. So what is the price range that you would consider appropriate? Here it says 800 euros per day. So about 100 euros per hour. Very important. This price is not obligatory. So you might have projects that could be paid differently, both higher or lower. From experience, however, it can be difficult to explain to a client why you would want to charge 1500 euros for a job if you put down 800 euros here. So the rate here should be slightly above what you would really want to earn. And if you write down 800 per day and you then make a client an offer for 600 euros per day, then the client will feel like he got a bargain. However, you shouldn't ask for too high a price either. If I were to put down 8,000 euros, then no company would ever hire me. That's why you need to find some kind of middle ground here. And I would suggest to raise the number around 10 to 20% here of what you would actually want to bill. What's also important is your job experience. And this is also very important. Malt shows your response rate and how long it takes you on average to respond to messages on Malt. So please always respond to messages or project offers. This is an absolute core element of your profile, even if the job might not be a good fit for you. 
Just drop him a few lines that you're not interested in the job or don't have the capacity right now. If you don't do that, your response rate will be low and that immediately leaves a bad impression on potential clients before they even get a chance to get to know you. What's also important are your skills. We just saw this earlier that we found someone for community management even though community management wasn't even in the title. And the reason for that was that the person had listed it as a skill. You can add as many skills as you'd like, but I would recommend not overdoing this as this could be confusing. As a customer, I am really searching for an expert and not a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Here, we have an advertising text. We can see here that this is a consulting agency. That means Marie doesn't work by herself. There's a whole team behind this profile. That's my agency. Here, you should advertise your skills and services. And guys, this is a sales text. Your potential client should really want to hire you after reading this. This here is not the space to be overly humble or downplay yourself. So please let other people read this for feedback before posting it. What's also important are your different jobs and experiences that you had in the past. I'll skip that for now. You will have made your own experiences. Other important points, and remember your experience on Amazon, you always have a look at reviews. Reviews from happy past clients are incredibly important. We actually never got any here on Malt, but customer reviews are incredibly important, especially in the beginning. Because we, Contest Tax Consulting, are also active on Malt and we too search for freelancers. And of course, I will have a look at whether the freelancer in question has done previous jobs and how happy the former client has been. And here I have an exciting practical tip for you. On Upwork, reviews are equally important, however, on Upwork, you can see the revenue, the time spent on the project, and all of this is also in your profile. So if you were to do a 100 euro job, so a really small job, you can see that it was just 100 euros. And of course, a potential client might value this less than a job for which you build 25,000 euros. On Malt, you do not see this. All you can see here are all the finished projects. If you want to build up your reputation on Malt, it might be a smart move to start with smaller jobs collect a few reviews and build up your reputation as future clients can't see whether the job was for 100 or 25,000 euros. What might also be interesting, and Upwork has just started doing this also, is that you can ask clients to write you a testimonial on your Malt profile without the job having been done on Malt. If you are creating a profile and are really starting at zero, I would really recommend you do this. Just ask a previous client to recommend you on Malt, and that way you will have a positive review without having made a single euro of revenue and you instantly make a good impression. Down here, you can add your different degrees and certificates. This tends to be less important. For some jobs it might be, but mostly not. Those are the important aspects. So let's summarize. What is important on your Malt profile? First, your photo. Second, the title that you chose up here. Thirdly, the daily rate you put down, fourth, your skills, and also number five, your description text, which should also include a call to action, and number six, your customer reviews. If you have filled out everything badly, but your customers are raving about you, then honestly, you will get job offers. So make sure that you get a review after every finished project on Malt from every single client. I hope this video has helped you get an understanding of how Malt works. And you now know what to pay attention to when creating your Malt profile. This video is part of a bigger video series in which we explain how you can make money and find clients online as a freelancer. Because we make these videos particularly for Ukrainian refugees and freelancers to show them how to find work in Europe, we have come up with a few more things. We have created a Telegram account. There, we can help you with the creation of your Malt profile and we answer all your questions on bureaucracy for freelancers in Germany. All of this in English and Ukrainian. That's why we have this video also in English and Ukrainian here and here.